All right, friends and neighbors, welcome back to another networking video. I thought I would circle back to the Precision Time Protocol because I teased it, I guess, when we were talking about network time. And so here we go, uh, Precision Time Protocol. So first up, remember NTP, right? Network Time Protocol. We've got that formalized in RFC 5905. It's actually version 4. What you find out if you do capture is that a lot of folks still do version 3. And if you want to go back and review that video, there's the there's the video link, but I'll put that in the show notes as well. Uh, and so the way that it is, or the way that it works, uh, the way that it is, uh, is that there are time servers all over the place. All, and there are public time servers and there are private time servers, but they're really sprinkled throughout the globe. Now, some companies offer them and you as a client query time servers that you know about. Now, how do you know about time servers? Well, they can be given to you via DHCP. They can also be given to you because your operating system, like Windows, knows where they are. But at any rate, you ask time servers what time it is, and they tell you what they think it is. Now, the problem, of course, is that it's coming across a network. So there's delay involved. There's the difference between the clocks on the two sides. So in a better world, you actually ask a couple of time servers what time it is, and then you sort of combine the results. And this is maybe where the precision time protocol comes in. Now, the first thing that we ought to say is that it's not an RFC. So you're not going to find it in the IETF documents. It is standardized in IEEE 1588. You can actually look that up at IEEE.org. The gang responsible for this effort is, is something called the Precise Network Clock Synchronization Working Group. When you are working on a standard, you're actually part of a working group, and that working group might actually work on a number of standards, usually related. Now, a good starting point is the 2008 version, even though there was discussion before that. And so the definition that we get from IEEE 1588 is that the standard defines a protocol enabling precise synchronization of clocks. Okay, I thought that's kind of what we were doing. And implemented with technologies such as network communication, local computing, and distributed objects. All right, that sounds familiar still. But here's where we get the difference. Protocol supports system-wide synchronization accuracy in the sub-microsecond range. Now, NTP can shoot for that, but really we're almost always talking about a time base of milliseconds Every once in a while, we get into sub-millisecond times, you know, so that would be microseconds. Now, with precision time protocol, as the next line says, sub-nanosecond time transfer accuracy can be achieved on a properly designed network. Now, I want to uh, point out here another, another idea is that this is not different technology. It's not that you're operating on a special network. You're operating on a tuned network. You're operating on a a very well designed network, but it's still Ethernet, still IP, still IPv6. Everything is still the same, still the same transport protocols. In this case, we're talking about UDP. So everything is essentially the same, but the idea is that the network design is a little bit different and the protocol operates in a little different format. So they look the same, they sound the same, they're doing the same job, but they are. You know, they're quite a bit different in implementation. So if we go out to ntp.org and we, we take a look at what, what they have to say about precision time protocol, we find out that there's sort of two different worlds. There's the NTP world where you've got regular nodes, servers, things of that sort. And it is the way that we've come to, to know operation. And it's fine for almost everything. And it's the client server model. Now, PTP has a couple of different modes of operation, but probably the most common is the broadcast mode, where they continually blast out stuff, and you continually update your clock, and that's kind of the idea. Now, these are special-purpose industrial automation and measurement networks. That is, folks that really, really care about high levels of precision in their timestamps, and I'll give you an example here in a minute. Now, here is one of the big differences between PTP and NTP, or the Precision Time Protocol and the Network Time Protocol. And this is besides the scaling, right? So you can create a profile for PTP. The profile designates the, the design and the operational requirements of this particular PTP implementation. 
So the example that's fun to talk about uh, is from the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN. And they're, of course, famous for the Large Hadron uh, Collider. They created a profile because, I mean, they're measuring stuff on a scale that is unimaginable to most of us. So they created a profile called White Rabbit. There were a lot of things built into it, right? Specialized Ethernet hardware clocks. Again, same stuff that we're talking about, but they just tuned it and made some tweaks to the network implementation. So there was some innovative design in there. So they had this profile that determined their PTP implementation. And it was important enough, it was significant enough that it was actually implemented or included in the 2019 version of uh, the PTP protocol from IEEE. Now, one side note that we might miss if we just sort of blow by it is that this was 2019, so not very long ago. And the point that I'm trying to make there is that standards processes and standards development still goes on today, both on, I mean, every standards organization, but for us, we like talking about the IEEE and the IETF. So this stuff is happening on a regular basis. All right, sounds great. I would like me some PTP. Now, most modern operating systems have an implementation or support of PTP, but there are changes that you have to make to your node. So for example, if I wanted to turn on PTP on this machine, there'd be registry changes, command line arguments, all kinds of stuff. And then there would still be network requirements, right? I would still have the need for a server and then maybe some specialized design. Now, you don't need the design if you're actually just fooling around with it, right? If you're just doing some testing. One of the differences between PTP and NTP is that a lot of times there's a very local server, which is one of the reasons why you can get those precision measurements. So a lot of specialized configuration. All right, so if there's some work that has to be done to get PTP on its feet in your network, are folks using it? The answer is absolutely yes, especially for instrumentation or applications, any application that requires sub millisecond or even sub nanosecond timing as part of the regular ordinary uh, operation. Now, when we were talking about latency, you know, we talked a lot about iperf and, and NTP and trying to get some accuracy in there. One of the nice things about PTP is that you have intimate knowledge of everybody's clocks. So when you have an implementation running, everybody knows what time it is to some level of precision. So now measuring latency can maybe happen in a different way. Normally we would send packets out, we wait for them to come back, and then maybe we divide it in half if we want one way. But with PTP, because the clocks are so accurate, I can just send you packets, you receive them with a particular timestamp, and because we've got a very precise measurement of time, you know that my my timestamp is very accurate. And so all that you have to do is do the delta between the arrival time and your timestamp, and you get a pretty good, a very, very good Im indication of latency, one-way latency. So there you have it, PTP and NTP doing the same job, but not quite the same. A little reality here is that most of us will continue to use NTP for some time. Uh, but if you're really, really worried about timing and you need those really, really small gradations in time deltas, well, think about switching to uh, PTP or looking at an implementation. Well, like and subscribe if you thought this was pretty cool. And no matter how you figure out what time it is, may those packets always reach their destinations.